This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, a local political expert considers Helen Chark's, Clark's chances of becoming the next UN Secretary General. The balcony collapse in the student quarter prompts a suggestion for a change in legislation. And our harbour is the venue for a regatta where some of the region's top sailors are going to be racing. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. Former Prime Minister Helen Clark has the government's backing in her bid to head the United Nations. She's in the running to be the eighth Secretary General, replacing Ban Ki-moon. And a local political expert thinks she could be the pick of the bunch. One of New Zealand's greatest political exports. Former Prime Minister Helen Clark is applying to head the United Nations. She'd be the first female and first Kiwi to do so. I think it's a really positive development. I think Helen Clark's been biding her time. I think she's clearly had the job in, in mind for a while. And I think she's very well placed to get it. Clark was a New Zealand Prime Minister for nine years and the UN's Development Programs Administrator for seven. She's still in that role and is one of eight leaders vying to replace Ban Ki-moon when his term's over at the end of the year. Clark has the backing of current Prime Minister John Key and the wider New Zealand government who have written to the UN Secretary Council in support. All the signs are that the Prime Minister will do his utmost to forget about past political differences and look at this as a great appointment, a potentially great appointment for New Zealand, and it would be. It's a very high profile role. Patman says Clark's appointment would boost New Zealand's profile internationally. He says New Zealand has a strong history of placing people in high level positions around the globe, and this is another example. I think Helen Clark's bid has a real prospect of success because A, we're representative of the majority of small states which make up the UN system and B, uh, we have a tradition of being even-handed and somewhat detached from many, many of the key problems in the world. The new Secretary General will be appointed at the end of the year by the UN General Assembly and the UN Security Council. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. The murder case against a young local man has progressed with the next court date scheduled for the 1st of June. That's when 21-year-old Alexander Merritt is due to appear before a judge in Dunedin for a pre-trial callover. He's already pleaded not guilty to one charge of murdering 51-year-old Dunedin woman Karen Ross. She worked with the accused at a South Dunedin cleaning service. And that's where her body was found in early December. Merritt's trial is due to start on the 3rd of October in Dunedin and has been set down for 10 days. In the meantime, he remains remanded in custody. Legislative change is being suggested following a report into the collapse of a balcony in the student quarter. More than a dozen people crowded the structure during a concert, leading to its demise and the injury of 18 partygoers. And now authorities are urging the government to help ensure it doesn't happen again. Considering all the facts, Dunedin City Council staff are assessing conclusions about the collapse of a student flat balcony in Castle Street last month. 18 young people were injured in the incident, two of them seriously. He commissioned an independent report to look at the causes of the collapse. It was important for us to ensure that we did everything we could have done in terms of the consenting of that building 16 years ago and also that the plan was followed when it was built. Overcrowding was to blame, according to report writers. The balcony fell during an impromptu gig by Dunedin Band 660 on the 4th of March. One of the injured partygoers remains in the spinal ward of Burwood Hospital. The structure met building code standards but had about 17 people on it, which was double capacity. This was an event that was held um, perhaps in an inappropriate place. That I think was a contributing factor to the, uh, to the balcony collapse, not the balcony itself. Um, Having so many people on, on any structure will cause it to fail if you put enough load on it. So it's important that we just look at it in a measured way. The council is working with other local organisations, including the university, to ensure such incidents don't happen again. Staff are wanting the government to assess the building code in relation to student flat balconies, but don't necessarily support a complete overhaul. I think it needs to be looked at to make a, and consider it, but as I say, 
there's a danger that we overreact and that there's a knee-jerk reaction. This is, again, one balcony failure. We don't get balcony failures um, every day. He says the council's priority is to work alongside emergency services and tertiary providers so future student events are safely managed. The Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment has received the council commissioned report and is expected to release its own findings on the case this week. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Two unusual burglaries have been reported to police involving items being left at homes. A Victoria Road house in St Kilda was broken into yesterday morning when a burglar smashed a window near the front door to gain entry. They reportedly went through the house without stealing anything, instead leaving a scooter at the back door, which they left open. In Stewart Street, flatmates woke to loud banging and the doorbell ringing at about 7am on Sunday. They found a strange man standing at the front door, dirty boot marks on internal doors and a cell phone and beanie in a bush outside. It appeared the front door lock had been jimmied. Some of the region's top sailors have descended on Otago Harbour for a secondary school's regatta. 38 teenagers will battle the elements and each other in several races over the next few days. And the organisers are pleased to see so many young adults taking on the challenge. Capitalising on calm conditions, dozens of young sailors have hit the water to vie for glory in the Port Otago Secondary School Sunburst Regatta. Participants from several Dunedin high schools are competing in the week-long event alongside students from as far away as Omaru. All the secondary, secondary schools from virtually Otago are invited to come along for a week at the uh, at appropriate time when they have the New Zealand Secondary Schools uh, Sports Week. And they sail sunburst yachts and this is eventuated from a, uh, an initiative of uh, Alan Garbutt who has since passed on but is carried on by us and managed by a lot of very keen people. On average, the crews are taking part in four or five races each day, depending on conditions. Officials are able to alter the course if the weather changes, and these guys are happy to adapt and help out their peers if necessary. This whole regatta is more, it's learning, there's good guys racing, there's beginners, and in, in the case of this, they help each other. And that's one of the benefits of having it, so it's a fun week. The almost 20 boats involved are an impressive sight in the middle of Otago Harbour. Waterhouse says this year's entry numbers are great in helping progress the sport while also benefiting the young participants. This is what we really want to do is you know, to keep furthering the sport, keeps them off their tablets and their phones for a couple of hours while they're out on the water in the elements. The Sunburst event runs throughout the week culminating with a prize giving on Friday evening. There's a long way to go until then though with plenty of time left for these keen sailors to show off on the water. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we'll find out what's in store for a celebration of the Sri Lankan New Year and we meet the teenager who's representing Otago in a national competition. Far too much stock, Alex Campbell men's wear, South Dunedin. Don't let me bore you, but it's rock bottom. Jeans, $40. Casual pants from only $20. Shorts from $30. Hundreds of them. Hundreds and hundreds of shirts at rock bottom prices. From $20 and knitwear from $50. That's rock bottom. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. It's rock bottom. New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax woodwear and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit www.beeswax.co.nz. <laughs>
for professional, reliable and approachable service where your dream kitchen design can become an affordable reality, contact the team at Kitchens for Less. Call 455-9973 or visit us online. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaiko Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488 5676. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs, visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 11 7766. Mobility Scooters of Targo. Mobility Scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Welcome back. Tougher border control has been imposed by the government in response to a dangerous plant outbreak affecting local farmers. The weed, known as velvet leaf, has been found in at least a dozen properties throughout the region, threatening crops. It's prompting an eradication program by the Otago Regional Council and other territorial authorities. Contaminated fodder beet seeds imported from Europe are thought to be the root of the problem. The government has just announced a ban on the affected product, as well as more laboratory testing and red tape for imported seeds. Permanent measures may follow. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX 50 has closed the day down 28 points, it's now at 6,716. The Nikkei is down 325 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is down against all the currencies that we follow. Members of the local Sri Lankan community are gearing up for their biggest annual celebration. Their new year falls on the 9th of April when traditional festivities will be taking place in Dunedin. Events are being organised by the Otago University Sri Lankan Students Association and Vice President Tharindu Ranabahu joins us to talk about it. Good evening. Good Why is the Sri Lankan New Year in April? So, astrological reasons. Um, the New Year falls in April because that's when the sun moves from the house of Pisces to the house of Aries. This coincides with the end of the harvest and for Sri Lankans this is why New Year's falls in April. Mm. How is it traditionally celebrated? So traditionally um, you get together with family and friends for the first meal of the day. This is then followed by festi um, f festivities such as that take part with food, dance and a bit more food to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good celebration. What's happening locally? So locally, the Sri Lankan Students Association here in Dunedin are putting on a New Year's event. This is taking place at the Sargood Centre at 5 o'clock. Sargood Centre is near the Logan Park. Um, there'll be face paint for the kids, there'll be traditional dance, there'll be a band playing, lots of traditional food provided by the Sri Lankan community here in Dunedin, which we really appreciate and thank them for. Um, the real peak of the night really comes at the end at between 8 and 8.15 when the fireworks go off, so should be there for that. Mm. How many people are involved? Um, there's a tight-knit group of about 20 students here in, here in the Sri Lankan Students Association that actually organise the event. But we're reaching out to the wider Dunedin community to get them all involved and immersed in our culture and traditions and overall celebrations. How many people are you hoping will attend? Putting it around about 150, mm -hmm. but obviously we're not limiting ourselves here. Open invitation to the wider Dunedin community to come down, really get amongst it and have a good time with Sri Lankan New Year's. What is unique about the Sri Lankan New Year? 
What's new, unique about it to me is um, it's a full day celebration. So during this time, we reflect on the year that's been and look forward to what to what's to come. Mm. How else do Sri Lankans celebrate their culture year round? Culture and, and religion go hand in hand. So there's quite a few religions in Sri Lanka and therefore they have their own celebrations and festivities. For example, Buddhists celebrate Vipesak, which is the festivity of the full moon. Mm. What do you hope that other residents will get from this particular celebration? So Sri Lankan New Year's is a very family friendly event. There will be lots of vibrant colours, dancing, songs, food, as I said, lots of food. Mm -hmm. And we just hope they go away having a good time. Mm. How long has the association been running this event? This event's been going for 15 years. And since, it's, since the Sri Lankan Students Association conception in 2001, we've held this event in high regard and hope to see it continue for future years. Otago University Sri Lankan Students Association Vice President Thurindu Ranabahu, thank you so much for your time. Thanks Rebecca. After the break on 39 Danita News, a speech on race unity, sending a local teenager to a national competition and members of one city surf lifesaving club score three gold medals. We'll find out what for. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. Works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new all black pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. Mobility scooters are targets. Mobility scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs, visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 11 7766. Stock, Alex Campbell menswear, South Dunedin. Don't let me bore you, but it's rock bottom. Jeans, $40. Casual pants from only $20. Shorts from $30. Hundreds of them. Hundreds and hundreds of shirts at rock bottom prices. From $20. And knitwear from $50. That's rock bottom. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. It's rock bottom. New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax, woodwear and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit www.beeswax.co.nz. generally not a job that we can't get a door out and in in a day. It's important to, to make sure you get a good design because you're going to be in it for the rest of your life. There's no schemes that are wrong when it's a personal choice thing, but some do look better than others.
Here's something else to look forward to sinking your teeth into every weekend with the Otago Daily Times. The Weekend Mix, your guide to what's hot in fashion, entertainment, food and more. New Weekend Magazine in your ODT. Pick up your copy this Saturday. Welcome back. Police say a European visitor has been left without legitimate identification after their possessions were stolen in their Tunnel Beach. The incident happened yesterday between 11.30am and 12.30pm. Officers say a rear window was smashed on a vehicle parked near the beach access track and two backpacks were stolen from inside. One pack contained a Finnish passport, cell phone and wallet with credit cards and a driver's licence. The other bag was loaded with clothing and batteries. Police say parking areas near tourist hotspots are often trawled by thieves. A Dunedin teenager is heading to Auckland this weekend after winning a local speech contest. The Logan Park High School pupil will represent Otago at the national final of the Race Unity speech competition. And it's just one of several exciting things on his plate. Speaking on an important topic, Year 13 student Grant McNaughton is going over his winning delivery before participating in the National Race Unity Speech Competition. He's getting plenty of practice but says standing in front of a crowd is something that comes naturally. Public speaking is very important to me. Um, I guess it's a really good way to articulate your thoughts, to be able to verbalise them um, and to have people listen. McNaughton won the regional race unity competition late last month with a speech focusing on the idea of not being a bystander to racism and discrimination. It's a message he has personal experience with, having been in situations where he witnessed racist behaviour but was unsure what to do. I think it was a very good uh, way for me to think about that and to um, tell others how, um, how I sort of uh, feel about that situation and I think it's a, a good issue to talk about because although racism doesn't happen to everyone, everyone can have a, a role in how it plays out in society. McNaughton's been involved in speech competitions since year seven and is part of a regional debating team representing Otago at a competition later this year. It's just one of a handful of things on his busy agenda. He's off to London in a few months as one of two New Zealanders selected to attend an international science forum. So in July I'll be going there where people from all over the, all over the world will be um, talking about um, science, how it uh, works for their specific situation um, in their countries, and also being able to talk to some of the, the best minds in the world, really, who um, teach in places like London. As part of that trip, McNaughton will also visit Geneva, where he'll see the Large Hadron Collider. He'll be balancing all that travel and competitions with his final year of high school. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Members of a local surf lifesaving club are celebrating success in a national competition. The St Clair Club finished second overall in the National IRB Championships held in the Bay of Plenty at the weekend. Members won three gold medals in different categories. A team of three locals took out the men's under-21 tube rescue and another St Clair trio won the under-21 men's rescue. The third medal went to three female surf lifesavers from St Clair who won the women's single rescue. Club members also achieved top three placings in four other events. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. Former Prime Minister Helen Clark is in the running to be the next United Nations Secretary General with the government's backing. A report into the recent collapse of a student flat balcony has the City Council suggesting the government should consider law changes. And dozens of Otago's top young sailors are battling the elements and each other on Otago Harbour for a secondary school's regatta. And it's time now to find out what's going to be in Wednesday's Otago Daily Times. We're joined by Phil Somerville. Good evening. Yes, hi Rebecca. Well, here's a, a bar in the back of the mini, so no prizes for guessing what it's called. A mini bar. A mini bar. Oh, well done. Very good. While we're very on, useful. Very useful. <laughs> yeah, so it goes around the place. Um, while we're on the, the subject of drink, a story about uh, in the old Gresham Hotel, which is being done up at the moment, there's a big wine vat and there's a pop-up winery going in there. A, a, a winemaker from Central Otago is keen on the vibe in the warehouse precinct, so that's interesting. And with wine, we have food. It's the, the dominant thing in the fresh, the three fresh pages tomorrow. Chef's garden with lots of recipes with a change of season. 
uh, wine column, wine again, lots of recipes. And the Targa Polytex Food 101 is a chicken and spice coconut sauce. I thought I'd mention one other story to just change the theme. Uh, there's one Dunedin resident is, is upset. He's been parking an old car in front of his own driveway up a quiet back street and has been getting parking tickets. Mm. Not happy. Well, details on that one in tomorrow's ODT. Thank you, Phil. Time now for local weather. This weather report proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorn Sports Bell. And here is today's city view, and it's taken of Vogel Street. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 16 degrees for the central city, 18 for the gardens, 19 out on the Tyree. To the situation, and the airflow will tend westerly over the South Island tomorrow. A trough of low pressure will move over the country on Thursday and Friday, and it will be followed by southwesters once again. To the forecast for some of the main towns on the Lower South Island for tomorrow. Norwesters with cloud increasing for Invercargill, Gore and Alexandra. Strong, strong Norwesters in Tiana with some rain and a high of 15. Norwesters with high cloud for Queenstown, Wanaka and Twizel all on 17 degrees. Norwesters with high cloud increasing and a high of 19 for Omaru. And Dunedin tonight mostly cloudy with an overnight low of 7. Tomorrow dry with high cloud in Norwest is freshening during the day, going for a high of 19. And on Thursday, cloudy with some rain developing later in the day. Northerlies easing and tending southeast, and 15 degrees is expected. And finally, to the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information. Low tide tomorrow morning is at 14 past 9, and high tide follows at 12 to 3. And fishing is not recommended tomorrow due to unsatisfactory conditions and a bad fish. And that is local news for Tuesday. We'll join you again tomorrow. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.